walked up to the water and she is as flat as a mill pond out there. There's a bit of breeze, so hopefully that does not pick up anymore and it drops off so we can have a beautiful day out there. Let's go get them, Jack. All right, guys, we've actually had to pull the pin out here. That wind's picking up heaps right out there where we were fishing. We're getting rocked and blown around really bad. I know it doesn't look too flat on the phone. When you're in a yak, this wind, it's so strong, just pushing it straight out. Like, we're getting blown at least 200 metres off those markers out to sea in like a minute. And if it gets any stronger out there, you do not want to get caught out there, especially in a yak, when you've got no power to bring you in except your arms and no one else is out here. So, sadly, caught an end to the morning. Hopefully we can get out in the afternoon though, either in the boat or back out in the yak, so hopefully it'll clear up. So yeah, sorry about All right, that. Alright guys, we took the risk, it's calmed down, we came back out, um, we've drifted out so far, and Jack's caught this beautiful, nice big squid. That's a really nice squid, it'd have at least like, what, 20, 25 centimetre hood. Looks nice and fat. That was on the Harimitsu Somazoku RR in 3.5. So we drift about a hundred meters back from those white, are uh, those yellow markers. And we've came this far out, and they just started all going off around here. So we're gonna paddle back in, and there's his chick absolutely covered in ink. We're gonna go back in. We're gonna do a couple more big drifts out here because it's paying off. So yeah, hopefully we can get a nice few more like that. Great stuff, Jack, mate. Proud of you. So guys, now it's completely backed off again. Basically back to a little lake. Um. We're going to stay out and fish, even though conditions are really tough today as the water's super murky. But hopefully we can get a couple more big squid like Jack's got. At the moment, I've got a Mizuda 2.5 pink squid jig to sit out on the sleeper. Now it's calmed down. And I'm using a um, Woolsey Ezia squid jig here. It's got the fluorescent orange, uh, yellow head, sorry, silver back and a silver body. So let's hope we can get some squid. This one's got a rattle in it. So hopefully it can help out with the murky water. All right, guys, I just caught this little minnow squid on the Mizuda 2.5 pink. We're just going to put this little guy back. He can live to fight another day. See you, bud. All right, guys, Jack just landed another nice big squid here on the RR red foil. How do you feel, mate? Yeah, mate, that's beautiful. <laughs> Alright guys, so this morning we went out and we caught a few nice keeper squid. So we came back in and we thought, let's come up with something new. A new way to completely cook our food. And we came up with what we call the CBC. Better known as the cheese, bacon and calamari sandwich. So we're going to show you guys how we make that. But first, we're going to need to clean the squid. So what you really want to do, Jack's doing it over here. You get your hood of your squid and you pretty much put it in hot water and you just start taking this, uh, all the skin off. Also, you wanna rip out the heads and that's when you wanna have a big garbage bag here to put your head and your guts into because that's perfect bait for next time you go out chasing either snapper, gummies, mull away, whatever. So that just goes straight in the bucket like that. All right, guys, so once you've cleaned all your squid like this, all your wings and your tubes, should be nice and white. You want to get yourself a nice little Tupperware bucket like this. And all you're going to pretty much do is you're going to get your squid, chuck it just down on the chopping board, grab your knife. You want to get rid of the little bit down the bottom there, bit of cartilage. Don't need that. Piece of. And then you want to get rid of your top bit as well. Just like that. You can cut it open and make it a little ring, but so that's pretty much what you're left with. Nice tube like that. You just want to get your knife. You want to dice nice rings, about a centimetre or two apart. Beautiful, and once you've done that, grab all your rings that are there and just pop them straight into that red bucket like that. Beautiful. Now a lot of people don't like to eat the wings of the squid, but I reckon they're one of the best bits. Especially when you get those really big ones, they're nice and thick, but even the little ones are just as good. This one's only about, what, 15 centimeters long. So it's up to you and your mates. You can either cut it into three, make it into thirds, or it can just go in half. But this one, because it's just us two, we're just gonna make it a three quarter, into thirds, sorry. 
Still relatively big, just like that. And they just go straight in there. And then your next step, once all the calamari is cut up like that, squash it down so it's all nice and compact. You can get yourself some milk. I prefer full cream, it's just that bit nicer. Um, and you just want to make sure you just pour it all over the squid and let the uh, milk come onto the top of the calamari so that it's soaking in it just right. Then you want to sit that in your fridge for about anywhere over 20 minutes. Then you start making your batter after that. So we'll go pop that in the fridge for 20 minutes and we'll see you after that. Alright guys, our squid's been soaking in the fridge for about 20 odd minutes now. So what we're going to do next, we're going to make our little paste, pastry mix sort of stuff that we use to coat the squid in before we chuck it on the uh, wok on top of the barbie and some oil. So first of all, first step, you want to get yourself some uh, plain white flour, just like that. You want to fill the bowl up mostly with that. Obviously, if you've got a lot more squid like we have in the past, when you get baguettes, you want to use a big container. Since there's only the three, just a nice little bowl full like that'll do. Next off, you want to get yourself some salt and some pepper. You want to drown it in that. Plenty of it. Plenty of pepper. Plenty of salt. You want to give that a quick stir with a fork. Make sure that's all mixed in nicely. Then add a bit more. Like that. And give it a last stir. So next up, we're going to heat the oil up, of course. So it takes a fair while to do it. So we're going to start doing it before we get into our mixing so it's ready to go. So you want to get some plain vegetable oil. And you just want to fill the wok up with that. Not too much, of course. Oh, just a fair amount like so. So it's about probably two, three centimetres deep. Then what you want to do after that, obviously you want to flick your gas bottle on. Like so. Then you just want to light your barbie. Oh, you come out. There we go. Perfect. You just let that heat up there. That's how we do it. Now while you're waiting for your oil to boil, <laughs> you can um, start setting up your bread. So we're going to have two sandwiches each. So that's our eight bits of bread, eight slices of cheese. Because the way we make it, we got bread, cheese, bacon, calamari, bacon, cheese, bread. Doesn't get called the uh, BCB for nothing, does it Jack? Nah. So you're going to set that up nicely. Bacon's all ready to be cooked. Awesome. Alright. Alright guys, the best way to figure out if your oil is ready, to, if it's already boiled or not, all you do you want to get a bit of a uh, bit of juice from your mouth, put it on your finger, flick it in the water. If it starts bubbling like that, you know it's ready to go. So Jack's going to show us what to do with the batter. So we get the uh, calamari out of the fridge that's been in the milk, and we pop it in the batter, and we roll it around in there for a little while till it's completely covered. Once it is. Gets popped onto the plate over here, and that's when that goes straight into the oil. Getting cool. Yep, yep. Alright, guys, so while that calamari is cooking, you want to flick over here. Bit of bacon paper on the uh, grill plate, saves you doing dishes. You want to get your uh, shortcut bacon out, and that just goes whack straight on the barbie. And that'll start to cook before you know it. Beauty. So once you get that sizzling for a bit, you want to start working on your bacon over here. Pretty much the way you want your calamari to come out. It's lightly crispy and golden like that. That's when it's perfectly cooked. So just keep the calamari going. As you can see, these wings are just a bit... Our oh, rings are ready now. So we'll just start moving them onto that plate. Alright guys, now that that's all done, we just grab our calamari and we place it over the bacon. And that's how it's done. And then the good thing about it, whatever calamari doesn't get put in the sandwich, you get to eat afterwards. That should about do me. Yeah, do. 
Yep, so then that's for later. But anyway, that's our tutorial. Jack, do you want to fold it up and give us a taste test, mate? Yeah, no problems. So we've never made this before. We just came up with it about half an hour ago. How's it go? Mate, that's beautiful. 